Xinhua uh, from Seoul National University. Uh, I want to uh, talk about the more about the visual QA. Uh, actually, visual QA is more like image QA compared to movie QA. Is uh, <coughs> compared to movie QA. Uh, visual QA is more focusing on the uh, fine grained question answering on the visual information in the single images, and that's the different thing. Okay. As you know, a few days ago, there was uh, there is um, the birthday of the Alan Turing. Uh, a few days, decades ago, Alan Turing proposed a seminal rework, Turing Test, which is proposed to assess artificial intelligence in a quantitative and objective way using blinded question answering. Recently, a visual Turing Test follows the, this direction with the visual information, which is one of a major modality of humans. Visual question answering is the task suited for multimodal fusion of image and question. If we, we look at this example, uh, we may not know the answer without visual information. Uh, note that a well-trained model has capability to answer this question. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, here is uh, some example about the VK 1.0 data set. Uh, and uh, maybe we can focus on this slide. Um, you can see that the Western mustache made up is kind of uh, about the object. And the how many uh, slides of uh, pictures are there? That is counting question. And uh, is this a vegetarian picture? Is the fine-grained recognition of the uh, images? And the, the last one, the bottom right, is does this man uh, have 2020 vision, uh, which needs the common sense or what knowledge about the, uh, to answer this uh, question correctly? And next year, there was uh, next year of the 1.0, they uh, release they release the 2.0 data set. Uh, here is a little bit different. Uh, each, uh, they try to balance the, the data distribution to avoid uh, the exploiting some bias in the data set. For example, uh, there are two similar images, but the, with the same questions, who is wearing glasses? In that case, in this case, is the depending on the images, the answer is totally different. The left image's answer is man. Man is wearing glasses, and the in the right images, the answer is woman. Uh, using that uh, technique, they collected the new data set for visual question answering task. That is uh, the. the lot of more data. Uh, here is uh, some statistics in the uh, big way 2.0 data set. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, images and question and answering data set. And there are a lot of split uh, to assess very rigorously. They have test adapt, test standard, Task challenge, task reserve uh, split uh, to assess quickly. And uh, the, uh, but please notice that the BQ scale score is the average of 10 choose 9 accuracies, effectively as shown in uh, the right table. It's a bit confusing to the newcomers to uh, this data set, but it is crucial to the fair comparison in the validation score report. Uh, for the test split, uh, they have evaluation servers, so you don't need to worry about uh, this uh, little bit tricky uh, metric, but you have to be very careful about the validation score report. Uh, here is a result of uh, Challenge 2016. Uh, uh, in that times, uh, there are 25 teams participants in these challenges uh, and the 26 institutes across the world and the nine countries. Uh, we ranked the fourth place in the 
2016. And then uh, here is the, some distribution. And this year, I skipped the 2017 results. Uh, in this year, uh, the more teams, 40 teams participated in the, these challenges. You, know, you see that on the right side, there are the 2016 winner model. And the green bar indicates the 2017 winner model. So the, uh, they have keep increasing the performance up to the human performance. But actually, human performance is around 83%, but currently state OAT is around 72%. So, uh, but actually, uh, in the, uh, at the very first, the score is around 54. So it is amazing. It's kept increasing the performance uh, uh, over the last three years. And, but actually, uh, uh, in this year, we ranked the second places because uh, in the score we ranked the third, but the, we awarded as the second places because uh, with the bootstrap sampling five thousand times, and then with the ninety-five confidence intervals, uh, with that task, the second and third model is not significantly different from each other, so we award it as the learner's models with the, uh, the, the second one. The first, first entry is uh, from the Facebook Air Research. Uh, the one thing is I want to correct the previous uh, talk. Uh, we also use the ensemble method, but the first and second one is use more heavy ensemble method. So is that is different thing. And our model is actually the uh, first place in the single model. So that was the uh, most interesting. And the other one uh, I want to uh, emphasize is the number questions. We rank the first place in the number questions using some counting model is the integrated R model. The counting model is different, uh, consists of many different differentiable functions, so we seamlessly integrated the, with our neural net one model. So we will talk about it later. Uh, here is the overview of progress in the VQH. Uh, the left one, ICCV, ICCV 15 paper, and then 16 winner, 17 winner, and 18 winner. So now we want to focus on the models. Uh, I prepared the three kind of models. Uh, coincidentally, three of them is from ours. And the fourth one is non-attention model. Uh, we don't use any attention mechanism, but this uh, one is the best non-attention model in Challenge 2016, overall fourth place. Uh, the, this is, I think, uh, we, uh, very important to uh, to see what's the uh, what's the important in the neural network architecture. So I picked this up, and the uh, second one is the attention attention model, which is more parsimonious parsimonious by linear polling, uh, which is defeat the two thousand six winner. Uh, actually, this paper is coming up the few month later of the uh, 2016 challenges, and then this model is direct basis model of 2017 done ups and many other uh, successive uh, models. So I think uh, it's worth to explore this one. And the third one is our recent work, bilinear attention network. It, this is a new kind of uh, attention mechanism, so maybe this is uh, very applicable to many other places. This is of course the single model in the, this challenges, overall run-ups. Okay, the first one. MLN is an uh, acronym of uh, Multimodal Regional Network. Yeah, this is less net. The, this is less net uh, with the very deep layers. Uh, in that times, it was so impressive that 
that model can have over 100 layers. Uh, the the idea of uh, that thing is the 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 X represented the intermediate representation in the deep neural network, uh, which is actually a convolution neural net. In this case, this representation learns the, through multiple abstraction levels before this layer. Uh, in the bottom, uh, X is added to F of X. The F of X means the, some learning blocks consists of convolution neural net. Uh, this simple operations allows f of x, although uh, more focusing on the uh, residual errors to optimize this function h of x in the right behavior. Uh, with this idea, uh, we want to apply to visual question answering task, multimodal learning task. Uh, before that, uh, in the pre-processing, we use the word to back and skip the vector model to embed a given question as a vector and use uh, 152 layer ResNet to get an image feature vector for training, a single image feature vector in this, in this moment. Uh, we formulate as a classification task using the most frequent 2000 phrases, answer phrases, uh, here is our proposed model. Uh, we, uh, mm, uh, in a visual question answering task, we observe a, a symmetric in modality uh, between the question and images. That question have more information to answer uh, because the image have more abundant information. Uh, in the previous work, using uh, question only information, it's significantly over alpha form, the image only uh, cases. So we propose the question centric residual learning. Um, left part, the, the, the blue one, blue arrows, uh, shows that the shocker connections for question and the, the right part shows uh, simple multimodal learning modules using element twice multipli multiplications uh, notice that this network uh, does not have any explicit uh, tension mechanism. Uh, there may be one thing uh, keep in, we should keep in mind that is the visual uh, feature vector is actually fixed. We use the fixed uh, ResNets, so maybe that makes some difference in the learning uh, mechanism. In other words, uh, uh, we are asked the question embedding modules, which is fine-tuned in the training sessions. So that that's a little bit different thing. And yeah, well, let's just skip this one. Uh, for the validation of our choices, we have to explore a lot of alternative models and a little bit tweak of the original connections and then some embedding and so on. If you want to learn about the more, you may check the paper. Uh, we proposed the, uh, a new visualization technique for this one. Uh, even if we do not have any explicit attention mechanism, we can show that how is learning is going on. Uh, we call, uh, we use the attention effect. We define the attention effect using the before and after of the element was multiplication. So the dif the difference between the after multiple uh, element wise multiplication and before element wise multiplication is back propagated to the image domain. Well, so we have a uh, three learning blocks, so we can uh, show uh, three uh, visualization in the bottom uh, left. And uh, for this visualization, we have to uh, some kind of post processing. Uh, we uh, subtract the, the mean of the uh, final gradient and then divide it by the standard deviation of the the gradient uh, distribution. Here are some more examples, and uh, 
Um, maybe the three images, three visualizations that have, uh, um, maybe there is no significant difference in the three ones might be due to minor digital updates in our network. Uh, here is much more notable example. This one shows that gradual focusing on the software, the answer. Well, that was the first work and we, uh, it's time to move to the second one. Second one is about the bilinear model. The bilinear uh, model can be defined as uh, these equations. Here is some diagram for this one. Which means that the input is the extended to two input compared to renewal model. Renewal model have just the one input, but this model have two input. And the weighted parameter W is uh, assigned to every interaction between the X and Y to input. And this can be rewritten uh, using some simple linear algebra, uh, as you can see on the right. But the one of drawback of uh, binomial model is it consumes a lot of parameters because uh, we need uh, uh, two uh, dimensional tensor for single scalar output. If we need a uh, vector output and then we need a three dimensional tensor. So one of a simple approach is ro uh, using low rank uh, approximation of uh, weight tensor. Uh, here is uh, for this scalar output, we can uh, decompose the weight matrix into two smaller matrix. Uh, mm, and then it turned out that the hot mark product of the two linear embedded vectors, as you can see on the right. And moreover, we replace one vector uh, over here. Uh, here is the one vector. Uh, the vector is consists of uh, just ones. And we replace the this vector with the P matrix, another uh, two-dimensional tensor to get vector output. This is a kind of simple trick. This is we call it low rank binary pooling. Uh, here is uh, we wrap up and uh, in the uh, deep, deep neural network you can see that if the input is x and y and then Linear embed is uh, each representation, and then Hadamard product, and another linear embedding. Very simple structures. This this one is very uh, interesting uh, since in the Cartesian neuroscience we can have some kind of interpretation of this model. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the coincidence detector of the Bond Owl. The coincidence detector of Bon Owl can detect a very fine grained localization using just ear, not using eye. A bon Owl also have very precise eyesight, but in the in the darkness, complete darkness, they can detect its uh, rest, a uh, learning rest in the complete dark places using just the ears because they used interoral time differences at two years. Just a tiny difference uh, time, uh, which is reaching the each ear using that signal. Uh, in the uh, inner ear, there are a lot of complex structure, neural structures. If the, uh, the sound source is just in front of the bone owl, in that case is just central neuron may be activated, but in the cases, the uh, sound source is just uh, in the right angle. In that cases, the in the 
left ear, this, the sound is reaches the first, and then uh, the uh, trouble around this line maybe takes more time, and then reach this area, and then on the, in the right ear, the, the signal is reached here. So this is called instant detector, and uh, depending on the time differences, the activation of uh, in this area is different. So using that information, Banal can detect is the, the sound source. Binary, low rank binary polling is maybe connected to this uh, idea. Uh, here is the two inputs, and X, Y, Y, and here is the kind of uh, linear embedding. And then maybe after uh, appropriate activation functions, maybe thread holding using uh, some kind uh, if the thread if the the signal is over the threshold maybe the output is one and the other case is zero uh, using that activation functions and and here elementized multiplication as and operation Uh, we so we propose using low rank binary pooling. We propose some attention network, and uh, in this case, uh, the image feature is 14 by 14 and 2048 tensor, which is uh, the output of last plane layer, uh, and then uh, the attention distribution can be get. Uh, this is a very um, very traditional attention network. But we use the low rank bound point. That's the different thing. And uh, the attention that we could use the question embedding vector as a query and the combine multiple image features using calculated weight by the query. We call this way uh, unitary attention because uh, the query is simple vector. And later we uh, introduces in the cases the question have multi-channel like uh, image features and uh, multi glimpse attention can be used in the MLD network uh, in here before the softmax to get some distribution of the image features you can get the the number of output uh, channel can be more than one which lead to have multiple tension maps or glimpses, the weighted image features, the multiple weighted image features are then concatenate for the last output. Uh, here is some another uh, visualization technique. The technique is very similar to the previous one. We use the the difference, difference between two and difference between two. Uh, which difference is used for the visualizers on the question. And uh, this one is visualized on two images. The, the different thing is we use the guided backpropagation, which is a little bit different from the just knife, uh, the vanilla backpropagation. Um, the guided backpropagation used the only positive output gradient, otherwise set to zeros. Maybe the background idea of uh, guided backpropagation is to use positive information in backpropagation. And using that back guided backpropagation, the visualization was the better and fine grained compared to a previous one. Here's some bigger example. And here's another example. So maybe what color is the tallest hair? The focusing on the hair. Here is the just uh, Visualization of a weight, weight, learn the weight, and here is the using the guided back propagation. Yeah. Here, here is the another ablation study, and um, here is the effect of attention. Uh, it, if we use uh, multiple layer and the original connections, uh, here is the MLN, the first work I presented. They have uh, three learning blocks, and uh, here is the edit A. A means the attention. Here, there is some interesting results. Um, the layer is keep decreasing, and uh, 
performance also increases. Weird. We used just a single layer. The performance is better than three layers. If we use attention network, or maybe attention network in much more relational learning, maybe not effective as we expected. So I'm a little bit confused as after this result. My assumption is maybe attention network in the deep networks may be hindered the optimization or maybe introduce some more overfitting effects and or maybe softmax introduces some kind of diminishing of gradients because the sigmoid also have a very negative effects on the um, diminishing of gradients so maybe softmax which is very similar to the uh, sigmoid property which may be introduced another uh, diminishing gradient effect so we want to investigate on this one okay Let's move on the bilinear attention. Bilinear attention is uh, to give separate attentions to every interactions between words and visual concept. Since these interactions have different meanings, it is natural to map a token dogs in a dogs in an image and cats to the cats in an image. So However, a naive approach uh, may introduce a huge computational cost, so we propose an efficient method with the same time complexity with the unitary attention network. And moreover, a uh, residual learning of attentions, uh, the purpose in this work, gives an efficient way of integrating multiple attention math instead of naive concatenation of the each joint representation. And uh, we will show uh, how we integrate the counting model. And uh, this is uh, two more channel inputs. Um, for the multi channel uh, question inputs, we just use all output of joy, which means that in the average time step, we just uh, grab the um, hidden state. Usually we just use the last hidden state, but we just grab the all of the hidden state. So we can have uh, n by low matrix for the question embedding matrix. The m means the dimension of uh, hidden size, and the row means the number of token in the question. And uh, for the image embeddings, the different thing is we. For the first time, we use the object detector. We select 10 to 100 uh, objects in the images using pre-trained fast CNN, which is actually bottom attention. The difference between the bottom attention network and the fast CNN is the um, uh, augmentation using the visual genome data set, which have uh, many classes, over 1,000 classes, and uh, 400 attributes of the each object. So using that thing, uh, this is uh, using the multi-task multi learning to get more rich hidden representation. So we use that. But actually, this bottom attention is used by the 2070 winner model. So uh, the why the M by phi matrix the M is the feature dimension and the V is number of objects, the detected object, which can be varying uh, for each examples because for each examples, maybe detected objects is maybe varying 10 to 100. And this slide is most important slide in the, the third work. How to get bilinear attention maps? Uh, using this equation, uh, maybe uh, this equation is very awkward or complicated, hard to understand. Uh, we invent th these equations uh, based on this interpretation. Exactly the same approach with low-rank volume pooling, but it is can be gracefully 
extend to multi-channel cases. So maybe using simple linear algebra, you can sh show that the, the bottom one is exactly equals to the upper one. And notice that the, this one is after softmax. Softmax apply the element twice mod, uh, element wisely. And uh, this A is logit, the logit, uh, the input of the softmax. So please notice that. And we can get multiple attention maps just varying the phi projection vectors. And uh, the linear embedding uh, U and V is just shared across the multiple uh, pioneer attention map. And after get, getting the pioneer attention maps, A, and uh, we can get the joint representation using this equation. And this equation is also uh, somewhat new to you, maybe because the each multiple the multiple joint feature fk indexed by k which means this one is color the, this is color value is filled with this equation we select is k uh, uh, low end columns and uh, here is the vector and this one is vector and uh, this one is matrix so this is equation is actually fully bilinear model. And this one is uh, iteratively over just just this k dimensions. But we don't use we don't have to use full loop because uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow NumPy uh, supports broadcasting, which means seamlessly these operations can be parallelized over multiple GPUs. So we don't have to worry about that, and and later uh, the, in the last part, uh, last slide that we will show you the uh, the GitHub repository for this implementation. And uh, again, this equation can be shows that that these equations can be related in this one and this one. Wow, this one is lowering bound poly. Actually, this one is one length by pulley, which means that whole equation is bilinear modules for attention learning, and uh, for each features, which is low rank bilinear pulling. So, is the bilinear model uh, low rank bilinear pulling inside bilinear pulling learning? So, that's the interesting one. And similar to MLB, we can apply the activation functions uh, in this network. This is a, a schematic figure of our model. However, for the correct, correct interpretation, be careful to examine the proposed uh, equations. Uh, and uh, for the class file, we just use one hidden layer, multiple layer perceptrons. Here is a time complex day. Assuming that the M, uh, maybe this is uh, the feature size of uh, image features, and the N is the question embedding vector size, and K is, is the joint representative size, and rho is the token length, and P is like this. I'm sorry, uh, maybe this one have to swap. And uh, for these assumptions, the time complexity of uh, binary attention network is just K and P which is the same with the uh, unitary attention network because actually uh, the band bilinear attention network consists of matrix chain multiplication. So the time complex is uh, half of a bound. Uh, but in practice, uh, bilinear attention network takes uh, around uh, uh, 300 seconds per epoch while unitary attention control takes uh, around 200 uh, seconds for epochs. So the binary attention network takes a little bit more time, but not sig significantly uh, uh, takes a lot of times. 
may be largely due to the increase of uh, input size of softmax maybe uh, previously the softmax uh, the input size of softmax is uh, worth the fee but in the binary attention we need uh, fee by law because we apply to softmax elements wisely and here is the relational learning method a little bit tweak uh, of the previous one uh, the all attention maps are acquired at the first step. That thing is a little bit different. The attention map is uh, acquired just a single step. And after that, using those attention maps, lesson learning is performed like this function. Uh, it can be interpreted as the look ahead, the prediction of sequence of attention because the, the attention map is acquired at the first step. And we believe that it prevents the short-sighted attention strategy and empirically uh, validate the compared to the other models. Uh, here is the overview. At the first step, using the question and images, we can get multiple attention maps using the varying the projection vectors. And here is the second step. Using the attention ma maps, we calculate this uh, the first step joint to representation here, and then here is the legit connections. The axis is added to the intermediate representation. And then this representation is uh, moved to the next layer and then borrows the calculated attention maps over here, and then calculate the second one. Here is the learning step. Amazingly, we use up to 12 attention maps. This is a very interesting uh, one. The performance is keep increasing. This is very interesting, right? And the uh, second one is rational effect of rational learning. Compared to just summation or concatenations, we, the, we propose the rational learning uh, proposed by ours was outperform the other comparative method. And uh, we also compare with the other attention mechanism. Uh, here is the unitary attention network, and here is co attention network used by the previous uh, learner models. Uh, here is a minor increment. <coughs> and here is the standard deviation using the three random initializers model. And uh, compared to two different ones, binary attention network is, is significantly better than other one. Maybe this one is due to the uh, mm, overfitting issues. Uh, we show that the binary attention training curve is here, and the other one is here. And maybe you cannot see the difference in here, but just focusing on the training curve. Compared to unitary attention and co attentions, the training curve is lower than any others, so which means that it gives a lot of regularization on the images using the binary attention network because the, the binary attention network gives some regularity in the attention one because uh, which uh, considers interaction between the question token and image detected object. So maybe this one maybe give some parts to be packed on the performance. And then here is the check with the, after fixing the number of parameters, and the X axis shows that the, the number of parameters we use, and uh, here is balancing score. We can show that the, the compared to unitary attention or co attentions, the binary attention networks gives more parsimony as property, and uh, the uh, interesting one is the four glimpse binary attention network, which used uh, four attention maps, which is more parsimonious than one glimpse binary attention network, which, which means that multiple glimpse is very effective to model the, the very complex task like uh, visual question answering. And here is another behavior analysis. Uh, left figure shows that uh, after training full network, we use just the first n bilinear attention network. 
which means the false and learning blocks before the uh, MLP classifier. Uh, for example, if uh, you can see that uh, band 12, which use 12 attention maps, uh, and uh, here used glimpse 2 point, this result is just to use the uh, first the two learning block and then just attaches the learned MLP classifier. That's weird, but uh, which this, this network is learned by relational learning, so the performance is not severely graduate, and uh, you can see the gradual performance increment when we use the the number of uh, used glimpses increased, and here is the. This shows that the property of relational learning can be found in other uh, relational learning uh, papers, like uh, in the CNN cases. And the life right figure shows that uh, the each attention map is saturated at a certain level of information entropy, which means that each attention map might give different influence to contribute to performance. And here is visualization of uh, two glimpse binding at uh, attention network. You can see that a symmetry in the binding attention maps, which means this one considers some interactions between the question and images. Generally, content words are attended, and uh, due to measure learning, uh, he has minor differences can be found. Uh, maybe this part and this part is a little bit different and uh, here is one is a little bit different um, and uh, the question was the what color are the pants of the guy skating board uh, the boxes show that most uh, influences the six boxes and uh, what and color uh, sorry what pants and maybe guy and skateboarding is more highlighted. And uh, interestingly, uh, just one means that this uh, uh, object and two indicates actually this one, this guy's pants. So model uh, answered uh, like uh, as a brown, but here is uh, some people over here. And the, the last one is the integrating of the counting models. But actually, counting model is proposed by the Zhang in the this year's cycle paper. Uh, that paper introduced the counting models originally, and uh, they used fun differential functions to capture uh, uh, reasoning of counting. Uh, there are some assumptions that uh, there is some multinary distribution which represented uh, the the compatibility of detected objects for the target concept, which means the uh, corresponding to the question. So the input is the attention distribution, which is actually multinary distributions not apply the softmax uh, in this case you use the sigmoid for the multinary distribution and then special information which means the x position y position and the width and height that information is used in this module and the output is just a real vector which can be integrated in the the other neural network um, I'm not gonna uh, cover the details, but here is the, some kind of basic idea. Um, using that special information of boxes, detected boxes, and then the attention vector, which is multinary distributions, we can get attention matrix using the outer product, and then multiple elementalized when multiplied using the distance matrix. Distance matrix can be acquired by the one minus IOU matrix. IOU is interaction intersection of a union, which uh, can be calculated using the 
parallel computation in the PyTorch, maybe in, even in the TensorFlow. So we don't worry about that computation. There is very efficient code for calculation, this one, seamlessly using the GPUs. And then after that, this one is intra-object edges. So after this operation, so we can disconnect this, this one. The, the, this, the dashed line means the, the actual single object. So maybe here is the detection can be duplicated. So these operations, maybe duplicated detection can be removed, this one, using the graph representation. After that, uh, we want to finalize this, this one because the here is the two detected boxes. So we can penalize this with the some weights, which can be calculated the previous inputs. And then here is penalizes by 0 0.5. And then this can be defined as uh, this graph. So the answer will be two instead of three. But uh, this uh, involves in the multitask learning because uh, usually that attention distribution for multinode distribution is come from the attention distributions of uh, uh, attention network. So uh, in our cases, the first task is binary attention learning and the third, uh, second one is uh, listening of counting. So here is our uh, proposal. We use the max out on the binary attention map. So here is the learned binary attention map and uh, we just max out over the question tokens and we can get these origins. Uh, this one is before the softmax application. And here is, here is the vector. And then this vector is input to the country module. That's the, the different one. In this way, we learn the country module and binary attention network uh, seamlessly. Here is a, a results on the test step and single mode. Here is a prior uh, kind of guessing and language only. And here is the 16 winner, 17 winner, and 17 learner. Actually, 17 learner is higher than the winner because the ensemble method is a little bit different. And the uh, learner modules use the, this image pictures and then 3% increases. Amazing. And uh, here is the bottom line of our experiment. And uh, we apply this uh, binary attention network compared to this one uh, around 0.8% uh, increment. And, and actually, the global feature is also used the previous one here, previous one. So it is much more fair to compare with this one and this one. In that case, is the performance is around the, the difference is around the 0.9%. And if we apply the counting module, the more 0.4%. But actually, this percent is very huge. And here is another, uh, another experiment on the fairly car. Uh, 30k entities. Uh, this is a visual grounding task. Map uh, this ta task uh, uh, have to uh, mapping the entity price to reasons in an images. Uh, here is the given sentences and given images, and we have to these entities, the a girl, and a yellow tennis shoe, green visor, and white. Tennis shoes, and tennis racket, and the tennis ball. And uh, the solid line is the prediction of our method, and the dashed line is the ground truth. So in this case, except this small, tiny tennis balls, 
the the all other thing is correct because the correct is defined by the uh, greater than 0 0.5 IOU intersection of the union. So, and this is more complicated same examples. And right. here is a quantitative result. The RMS is set the new state about on the Plica 3K entities. And uh, maybe you can see that here is the Hughes, uh, Hughes rip up of the performance. The reason of this one is the use of uh, more advanced image features. They also use the fast CNN and the uh, augmentation using the visual genomes. So the image feature is very similar to this one. So bilinear tension efforts gives more uh, gain in the performance. And here is a fine grain this results. And here's a lot of uh, uh, subcategories. In most cases, binary attention networks gives more better result. Well, here is conclusions. Uh, in the first module, we propose multiple dimensional learning, uh, which gives more efficient way to combine mul uh, combine the visual features. And the row rank volume pooling uh, comes from element wise multiplication in the neural network can be exploited in the attention network very efficiently and uh, our recent work bilinear attention network uh, extend the unitary attention networks um, using the low rank volume pooling and the, the other one is the we uh, we give some more advanced way of uh, less learning so our third work is uh, combined the previous the two achievement so we are well uh, uh, satisfactory for this one.